ओके पार्ट ए ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इज ए सिंगल फेस फुल वेव डायोड बेस रेक्टिफाइड सर्किट द सोर्स इंडक्टेंस इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी नेग्लिजिबल एंड द लोड कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए हाईली इंडक्टिव लोड विच अ कांस्टेंट डीसी करंट ऑफ 10 एम्पियर्स द सोर्स वोल्टेज हैज द पल्स एज गिवन हियर व्हिच इज ऑलवेज व्हेन यू आर गिवन अ क्वेश्चन राइट ट्राई टू ड्रॉ आउट योर सर्किट और योर पल्सेस इवन इफ इट्स गिवन हियर Okay, don't okay, don't just say, oh, I'll look at this and you know draw it out on the other thing. Draw out this pulse here. It will really help you in you know, understanding how your waveform will look like later on. Okay. So in this case, I have 60 degrees, nothing. Then I have next 120 degrees. I have some pulse here. Next thing, nothing here. This zero. Sixty, one eighty, two forty, three sixty. We just need to know one cycle, right? We don't need to have no more than one cycle here. So let's look at this. So what this means here is that for my initial section, sixty degrees, I don't have any voltage output from my source. My Vs is zero for zero to sixty degree. Sixty to one eighty, it is. Sixty to one eighty degrees, it is. Some more, just two hundred volts. So this is my one half period, right? And then here is this minus two hundred volts. <coughs> Determine the average output voltage and therefore the power consumed by the load. Now what what we know here is we have a constant DC current. So my output current is something like this of ten amperes I O. <coughs> okay, have a constant DC current of 10 amperes, and I say constant means going to be there throughout. It doesn't look so, but yeah, it's a constant value here. Okay, then what? Uh, determine the average output voltage. Now this is a normal simple rectifier which looks. Am I my source? Am I this here? Voltage into my current. So I have P is just 
Rio went to 5 which is 10 times 133, 1333.33 watts. <coughs> okay? Easy part, right? Let's get to the difficult part now. <coughs> we have a source inductance now. Okay? Don't jump to the conclusion that source inductance means I'm going to have commutation. Don't jump to that conclusion yet. <coughs> Let's work it out. It costs how many? 15 marks for a reason. It was as simple as you know, just putting the formula there and doing it, it won't be 15 marks, maybe 5 marks. Okay? So let's look at it in terms of. Uh, my inductance here. load has become a DC source. <coughs> it's basically a battery here, nothing else. <coughs> okay? So, remember how we analyze our DC-DC converters? We took it one bit at a time and checked if it is on during that time, what happened during that time, right? Let's look at this the same way. <coughs> There's no other option, you have to do that. So my voltage waveform is So my output voltage is something like Voltage, huh? rectified voltage and rectified voltage okay but let's look at this section here starting from here what happens when I have this here any of my diodes are forward biased no right so I'm not going to get what about the current the current is going to be zero Right? Because there's no output here, right? <coughs> there's no none of the diodes are being forward biased. Which means <coughs> I'm going to get a current which looks something like let's say I I E S. Zero. <coughs> now what happens? I have a positive voltage here, right? So you're going to have D1 and D2 conducting. Okay. If D1, D2 conduct, what happens? You're going to have the circuit which looks something like. This here, D1, D2 here, right? <coughs> D1, D2 are short, right? So my circuit is going to be this source, this inductor, this voltage, right? I'm going to have this source and this is how my circuit is going to look like. <coughs> I have a voltage here, I have another voltage here and I have an inductor here, right? <coughs> So, let me remind you of something. I have this voltage in when D1 and D2 are connecting. What is this voltage here? 200 volts. So, I have this as 200. This is at 160. So, what is VL? 40? Do I know the value of L? 
1 million read, right? <coughs> Do I know the value of dt? Yeah, 60 to 180 degrees, right? Which is 1 with 2 by 3, the duty cycle, right? Do I know the time? There is, we are given a frequency, right? 50 hertz. So, this is 20 millisecond. This corresponds to 20 millisecond. 10 millisecond. This corresponds to 6.66667 milliseconds. So, I know dt here. So my plot is going to look something like this. My current is going to be increasing, right? From zero it increases to a certain value. Okay? <clears throat> I know this time period. I know, can I find this period out? This is basically my delta IL, right? DIL, the value DIL, right? DIL by dt is going to give me this slope, which is DIL with 40 by L. <clears throat> Make sense? So tell me what the value of DIL. DIL is just 40 by 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 6.667 into 10 raised to minus 3. <coughs> so it's basically 40 into 6.667 I guess. Which is quite a high value, right? It's for the 240 amp here, is it? <coughs> Does it make sense? Yep. Hmm? So what is the value of DIL? <coughs> Tell me. 40 by 1 into 10 raised to minus 3. Okay? 240 something, right? Any more? 40 into 2 by 3. <coughs> so 80 by 3. <coughs> How much is it? Take out know the calculator. I don't have my. How much? 266.6. Okay. So this corresponds to 266.68. And the DI. <coughs> okay? I will write it down here also, don't worry. To understand the logic, right? I find out VL is 40, which is equal to VS minus V output, <coughs> which is equal to LDIL by DT, where my L is now 1 milli Henry, 10 raised to minus 3. DIL is the variation here, dt is just this time period here. So this is 50 hertz. One thing is 50 hertz. This is 10 milli. So this is 20 millisecond. This is 10 millisecond. It's going to be 6.67 of that. So I have 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 3. It implies I'm going to get a dil of 266.68. It's somewhere here. <coughs> <laughs> now, when this becomes off here, what happens? It's going to discharge, right? Does it go down immediately? No, right? <clears throat> but what happens when it's located in terms of the circuit here? So, if D1, D2, this becomes off now, right? The current is this way. <clears throat> Will my current become negative immediately? No. It's going to slowly drop or whatever it may be drop at some rate, right? So D1, D2 are still going to conduct, right? But my Vs here becomes zero, right? This voltage has become, let's say, in this condition here. So when I'll put the value for 180 degrees to 240 degrees, that section here. D1, D2 are still conducting because the current can't go immediately back to zero, right? Only if the current becomes zero, then or lower, the D1, D2 will stop conducting. So, in this case, <coughs> my circuit looks something like this. <coughs> so, 
still the same but difference is this is 0 this is 160 right <coughs> this is 0 volts because <coughs> this section Vs is 0 right but this voltage output here is still 160 <coughs> make sense so I'm going to have this which means my VL now is Negative 160. Minus 160. Right? Only if it is negative, I can discharge my inductor, right? So I'm going to have VL is minus 160 is equal to LDIL by DT. <coughs> Do I know DT? Do I know DT? And DT is now this period, right? L is still the same. So <coughs> the important thing, why it is important is I need to know how this drops. If this drops like this, then when the next cycle comes in, right, my current has to actually become negative, right? My I source has to become negative. Then you are going to have commutation. If it drops like this, it already becomes zero before I apply my next voltage, the negative voltage. <coughs> We draw this in the source itself. Don't look at the load here. <coughs> so V S and I S right. Let's look at that in terms of this. Before this voltage comes in, here the current is going to be negative, right? If the current drops like this, then here mm -hmm. onwards I can then again charge fast and it's not a problem. Right? We have to see if this slope here, right? Does it end here or does it end somewhere here? If the current is still positive when I am giving a negative voltage is going to have a commutation issue, right? Because it has to go from higher to lower value immediately. Then you will have the commutation issue coming in. So for that I need to know at what rate this is dropping. <coughs> so let's find out. V I L here is absolute value is going to be 160 by 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 into D T now is 3.33, right? to minus 3. So 160 into 3.33, what is the value? 533.2. Which means what? From here, the DIL is 533. This one was only 266. Right? This has means it already become, DIL is already negative. Which means it has already somewhere already here, right? <coughs> this is how it's dropping now, right? The DIL is dropping along these lines. What I mean is, in this period DT, my DIL has to be this drop here, right? This slope is just DIL by DT. <coughs> so DIL now is 533, which is definitely larger than 266. It's actually twice that our value, right? So my current has already become negative when I am applying a negative voltage. Do I have to worry about commutation now? It is just going to be, when I give a negative voltage, it is going to be still charging. <coughs> Something like this possibly. Then, reduces back up. <coughs> So in this case, I don't have to worry about our commutation issue here. Why? Why? Commutation happens when I apply a negative voltage, my current is still positive and I have to immediately switch my current direction. But in this case, my current has already switched direction because of the way it is dropping, right? <coughs> because of my load, my current has already become negative. So I don't have to worry about the commutation. So there's not going to be any period where u is going to be less or something. So you don't have to find out the u value here. Because there is no u value here. There is no u during which there's going to be any commutation here. And this, did I use any other formula here? 
This is just basic VLS LDL by DT, nothing else, right? <coughs> You know the problem here? Can tell me the yes. Okay. Can tell me the problem here? <coughs> so if we have a GIL for less than 266, then we will have a competition. Yes. Then you have to find out okay, what would be the voltage now across at that point of time? My inductor, which is you still have to you can use the same formulas here. Still going to be this one here, this is shorted here, you know. You're going to have this voltage across 200. So then you can still use the commutation problem, not a problem there. But in this case, <coughs> but can you just look at this and tell me, does it make sense here, this diagram? Hmm? Why not? What this literally means is that at this point, my D3, D4 start conducting. Once it drops to zero here, right? Which means D1, D2 stop conducting, right? That it means D3, D4 has started conducting, right? That's all, right? So D3, D4 start conducting here. At this instant, it's still going to have a negative increase in slope, right? So I'm going to have something like at this point again is going to drop so I have going to be again 266.68 from here onwards so this delta is going to be the next point is going to be 266 plus 512 something 5233 goes down here then minus 533 back <coughs> Then what happens? <clears throat> By the way guys, for this question right, when I first saw the question, I thought the question was wrong. <coughs> you know why? If I have a DC source, sorry, if I have a DC load of 160 volts, okay, my average output from my DC source is actually less than my DC load. 2 by 3 into 200, right? It is 133. So what voltage output I'm getting here is 133 from my, you know, here. What I have is 160. So this is my source and this becomes my load in some way, which makes sense because my current is increasing in the negative direction here. No, the thing is, if you go through that method, right? The problem is, you assume that your current is always going in the opposite direction. The problem is, your current can't go this way anyways, because you have diodes here. But the direction of, okay, you know, depending on what, whenever this voltage is negative, it's going to be basically just have a higher output compared to the other one. I had a strong feeling there was a typo in this. But if you have something like this, with you know valid voltages, say this was 400 voltage, 400 volts, then this is a valid question, right? Yeah, 400 volts, 2 by 3 is just? Yeah, how much is 400 2, 2 by 3? In minute by 3. So 266 something. 266. 266, 160 is still charged, it's not a problem. When you can find the current and everything, not a problem there. You can still plot it out this way. But this is where you approach it. You understand the logic, right? If your this comes down to negative before, then you are going to have no commutation. But if it comes, still stays positive before I give the negative voltage, it's going to have commutation. Commutation basically happens because my current doesn't is still positive when my voltage has already become negative. Commutation happens when your current stays positive when my voltage has become negative. So to transfer the resistive load, no problem because it will instantly change. But RL load or L load is going to take some time to change. 
so that period is when you are going to have your issues with your commutation there <coughs> but such question make sure you approach it like that i don't know this is the right this is how i would approach it for so i didn't see the solution i don't know the solution i don't know this what problem is expecting but if i was given this question i would be doing this okay just going to decrease all the way right Yes, it's going to be negative in some form or less because next cycle is again going to be positive or something like that. <coughs> <coughs> At least for this period, right? Not this 